Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Wednesday, October 20th, 2021. Let's talk NBA. Let's talk the Lakers. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now I'm in Northern California. I'm in Golden State Warrior Country. So you can imagine, I was pinned to my TV yesterday watching the home team, the Golden State Warriors, uh, face the Los Angeles Lakers. Right? Full disclosure, I'm a Knicks fan, but uh, I'm an NBA fan. Right? So Warriors, Lakers, I was watching the TV. I wanted to see the new look, excuse me, the new look Lakers. I wanted to figure out where they fit in to my picture of what's going to happen in the Western Conference. Short answer, they don't. What I want everyone to do is to study the box score from the Lakers opening day loss to the Warriors. Right, study that box score. You're going to see that LeBron James and Anthony Davis are in midseason form. They both scored over 30 points. Folks, LeBron was hitting outside shots to start the game. I lost count when he got to his third three. In other words, you can't expect 30-point <clears throat> nights every night with everything working offensively for both guys at the same time. And yet the Lakers lost. And the reason the Lakers lost, in my opinion, is because of things they can't fix. Right? Just understand. The Lakers defensively have major holes. You're facing the Golden State Warriors. You understand this team is going to be taking a lot of threes. You know that. You know the Warriors are going to be throwing the ball all around the court. Right? They still have the same coach they've had during their run, Steve Kerr. You know how Steve Kerr wants it to be. But yet, time in and time out, Warrior guys were wide open from three. Wide open. And then you look at the Lakers and you understood. Carmelo Anthony hasn't played defense for the last seven years. He's not going to start playing defense now. Right? For all he's doing on the offensive end, and he's still an excellent offensive player, Carmelo Anthony is going to be standing around and watching his guy on the defensive end shoot wide open threes. You get that. The other problem, too, is some of the Lakers, you know, they just don't do what they used to do in one part of the game. I think one of the best Laker players is Dwight Howard. Dwight Howard is not averaging 10 points a game over the last few months. Right? He's still a great defender, but he's not going to give you points. Neither is Rajon Rondo. Right? These guys, of course, are out there because they're supposed to be the defensive stoppers on the team. Folks, like you, I love the names on the Lakers. They bring back a lot of memories. I'm a Dwight Howard fan. Right? Russell Westbrook has averaged a triple-double multiple years. You understand that you're taking a trip down old-timers lane. Right? The Lakers, you can look at the Lakers and say, wow, yeah, I remember when Carmelo Anthony, you know, was one of the leading scorers in the entire league. Right? We all have great memories of many Laker players. But you understand, this team is a little bit too old. They're the oldest team in the league by more than a year. Folks, that's hard to accomplish. You know, I, I wonder, too, about Frank Vogel's ability to control this team. Russell Westbrook has brought in, has bought in to the system right now because it's the first month of the year. Russell was an afterthought in Game 1. He wasn't involved in the flow of the offense. You also understood that Russell 
isn't a gifted three-point shooter. Right? For his career, Russell has averaged under 33% from three. Right? And you understand the team has some dynamic guys who can score inside. LeBron, AD. Right? So there are going to be times where Russell outside, you know, other teams are going to say, go ahead, Russell, take the shot. At some point, ego is going to start to matter. Russell's going to say, gee, I didn't join this Laker team <clears throat> to average 12 points a game. To be a player off the bench who's not in sixth man of the year competition. Right? Let me just say, what could Frank Vogel say to Carmelo Anthony to get him to play defense? Now, what I want people to do is to look at the Lakers situation, look hard at it. Right? Again, LeBron over 30 points. AD over 30 points. Both guys did a lot of other things. Right? Boards, blocks, etc. The team lost. Right? Let's not kid ourselves. I'm in the Bay Area. I know a lot of people are talking up the Warriors. The Warriors don't have Klay Thompson. Who's the big man on the Warriors? Folks, look at the West right now, and this is a bit of a shocker to me. Absolute shocker. You know, I thought when I was watching basketball last year, that the big teams in the West were Utah, the one seed, right? Phoenix, the team that came out of the West, right? Aren't those the big teams? Also, let's throw in the MVP's team, the Denver Nuggets, right? We all understand that Jamal Murray got hurt. The Nuggets weren't operating at full strength at the end of the year, but you looked at that roster and you understood, wow, if these guys can all get on the court healthy, they're going to be downright scary, especially since they've added Aaron Gordon. Right now they have some athleticism, right? Joker, quite frankly, is the best center in the game by a margin. And B doesn't pass like Joker. Look at the numbers. Now, would it shock you to know that right now, on October 20th, the odds they're giving you to win the Western Conference don't have any of those teams, Utah, Phoenix, Denver, among the two favored teams to come out of the conference and win the NBA title. Folks, the Lakers, the flawed team I just mentioned, the team that's at risk of getting more injuries because of the ages of the players, the team that has so many new pieces, they don't even know how to play together. Look at Russell Westbrook's line from last night. And again, understand, last night was a night where both LeBron and AD went off, exploded, had 30-point games, right? The Lakers are going to take a couple of months to figure out how to play together. And when they figure out how to play together, they're still going to have holes. Because, of course, Carmelo can't play defense. Rajon Rondo, unless he's wide open, can't hit a three-point shot, right? Dwight Howard, his offense has left the building. The Lakers somehow and the Warriors are the team's most uh, favored to win the NBA title out of the West. So I'm getting stunning value. I mean stunning value. On the Utah Jazz, 14 to 1 to win the NBA title. Folks, Donovan Mitchell is still on the team. Rudy Gobert is still on the team. Guys like Mike Conley are healthier than they were last year. Right, Phoenix Suns, plus 1,600. Now let's watch the DeAndre Ayton situation closely. This could go one of two ways. Ayton asked for a max deal. The powers that be in Phoenix said, no, no, we're not going to give it to you. Right, an argument can be made that if Clint Capella and some others are not getting max money, Neither should DeAndre Ayton. Right now, Ayton, who's a key part of their team, 
right? Big men are hard to find. Athletic, defensive big men are extremely hard to find. Aiton could go along with the program and say, okay, look, I understand that our team has a lot of talent and has a real chance here. That you don't get these chances that often in your career, right? Where you have a Chris Paul who's older, right? In a few years, Chris Paul's age is really going to start to show. Father Time is the ultimate winner in professional sports, right? But you have Chris Paul. You have Corey Booker on the team. I'm, 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 I'm thinking of the politician. You have Corey on the team, the great shooter, right? Either Aiton says, okay, that's fine. Whatever I'm getting paid, my family's not going to starve. After all, I was the first pick in an NBA draft, right? My family's doing okay. No one's starving. This is my opportunity here to make my reputation. This is our opportunity to bring a title to Phoenix, right? Whatever people say after this year, when we bring a title to Phoenix, will have to be said against a backdrop of me wearing a, a, a ring. Now, now, either Aiton takes that path, or the resentment bills. Aiton thinks to himself, you got to be kidding. I got our team to an NBA Finals last year. We were up in that Finals. And this team's going to do me like this? Where can they get me on the open market? Right? Joel Embiid is not exactly on the trade market, is he? So if Aiton then decides to check out, right, has his people tell the Suns, hey, we want to get traded, right, has his situation start to spin out of control, like the Ben Simmons situation in Philly, let's face it, situations like this develop, then Phoenix is finished. But just to understand, you're getting the Phoenix Suns at a plus 1,600 here. By contrast, you're getting the Lakers at a plus 300. In other words, you're getting more than five times better odds on the team that was just in the NBA Finals. But let's talk about what I consider to be the elephant in the room. Folks, the Denver Nuggets are 20 to 1 right now. Folks, if things click for this team, they're going to be deep in the playoffs. Right? If Jamal Murray comes back and is still Jamal Murray, I would take this team over the Lakers. Right? They're younger, they're more athletic, they're dangerous. In my opinion, there is no reason why you should be getting them at 20 to 1. Now, let me make a foundational point. If you bet futures, you understand that the beginning of the year is one of the most important times of the year because things are mispriced by a wide margin. Right? In the NFL, I wish I would have had the vision to take the Arizona Cardinals, right? Just understand, the bet you could have had on the Cardinals could have made you money already because at a certain point you can hedge the play, right? You're getting outrageous odds, so then at that point you can say, well, other than the Cardinals, who has a chance in the NFC? Let me put some money on the Rams. Let me put some money on Tampa. Right? Um, you know, Aaron Rodgers is always a problem. Let me put some money on Green Bay. Let me see how this unfolds. Right? Understand you have the money to put on those other teams because you got huge odds. Huge odds on the Arizona Cardinals. Here in basketball, folks, the fact that you're getting much better than 10 to 1 odds on Utah, Phoenix, and Denver allows you to sprinkle 
some other money on some other teams. Right? The Lakers should not be favored to come out of the West. Right? Basketball is not lineal. I can't think, wow, LeBron James, he's one of the best players ever. AD, he's always an MVP candidate. Russell Westbrook, wow, he's won an MVP. Let me add these guys together. Let me uh, have future Hall of Famer, and he is. Dwight Howard, let me add Carmelo Anthony, let me add Rajon Rondo, and I have a powerhouse. That's not the way basketball works. First off, you got to be looking at the calendar, don't you? You have to say to yourself, well, LeBron's over 30. Then you say, well, you know, Dwight Howard's over 30. Then you say, oh, you know, Carmelo's over 30. And so, you know, Rajon Rondo's over 30. Suddenly, you have a problem. Suddenly, you know, just mathematically, one of these guys over 30 is going to have injury problems. Let's face it. LeBron James himself, the workhorse, has had injury problems of late. Right? The Golden State Warriors, look, I love Steph Curry, too. Right? I think Steph is, you know, one of the best players I've ever seen. He got a triple-double last night. It's his first triple-double since 2016. You understand, one of the reasons Curry got a triple-double is because the Warriors needed him to rebound the basketball. They don't have Joker on the team. They don't have Joel Embiid on the team. They don't even have a Dwight Howard on the team coming off the bench to vacuum up a bunch of rebounds. You heard me mention Clint Capella. They don't have a Clint Capella on the team. Right, so you have to understand. The Warriors are keeping it going because Curry is doing things like getting triple doubles. Last year, by the way, Curry led the team Hell, forget the team. Curry led the league in scoring. Right? Look at what Steph Curry did last year, the last six weeks of the season. Folks, Steph Curry is now in his 30s. As first ballot as Steph Curry is, you can't expect him to get triple doubles or, you know, uh, get 35, 37 points. By the way, that's what he averaged for a month last year. There's a month last year where Steph Curry is averaging over 35 points a game. You can't expect that. And you look around at the rest of the team and you have to say to yourself, wow, you know, Draymond Green, Andre Iguodala, hey, there will be nights where those guys explode, but wow, does this team deserve to be going off at shorter rods than the Utah Jazz? A team with people in their prime, right? Rudy Gobert, folks, that's a defensive player of the year winner in the past. That's a max guy in the paint, right? Donovan Mitchell, I, I, I got to tell you, if he were on the Warriors right now, especially with Clay Thompson out, Mitchell would be the second best offensive threat on that team, right? We'll give Curry, who just won a scoring title, top billing. And so, my point to you is, the West is loaded. The Lakers are giving you a look down memory lane. Don't confuse 2021 with 2013. Right? Carbello's defense wasn't great in 2013. Folks, it's practically non-existent now. Right? There's only so much you can do. Also... I can get a group of young people together and say, hey, let's play together. Let's learn how to play as a team. And they'll buy in because they want to win. What do I do when I get guys together, right, who have had a lot of success in the past, who understand that they have built their houses, they've built their bank accounts on their skills, on being alpha. Right, folks, I'm not sure if when the clock's winding down and he's standing on the court with LeBron, with AD, 
with Carmelo. I'm still not sure if Russell Westbrook's going to pass the basketball. I believe he's going to want to take that last shot. This is L.A. You noticed as Steph Curry left the court yesterday, right after his teams, uh, after teammates doused him with water, right after he just gave a national interview. You saw him pivot. There was a big star in the crowd, right? This is what happens at Laker games. There was a big star in the crowd, and you notice Curry on his way to the locker room stopped, talked with the star's son, turned around, shook the star's hand. Now understand, if you're Russell Westbrook, and you're playing in front of stars, and guys like LeBron and AD are scoring 30 points that night, right? You know, doing some stuff, filling up the stat sheets, right? LeBron was LeBron. AD was AD. You're going to think, hey, man, I want to be a star too, right? You're going to look into the crowd. You're going to see these big-time comedians. You're going to see these big-time actors, actresses. You want some of the spotlight too, right? You're not ready to be a complimentary player. You know that team is going to have a much harder time coming together than most teams. And you understand, guys like Trevor Ariza are hurt right now. When you get a bunch of guys who are well into their 30s, how old is Carmelo Anthony? How old is LeBron James? Right? We're talking about them as if they're 30 or 31 years old. Folks, they're much older than that. Rage and Rondo. Right? Put a different way. Rage and won, uh, Rondo won a championship with Paul Pierce, retired, has been in the booth for years. With Ray Allen, retired, has been out of the league for years. With Kevin Garnett, retired, has been out of the league for years, has done podcasts and stuff like that for years. That's how far back Rage and Rondo goes. So you need to view these futures right now in the NBA as a huge opportunity. Folks, it's mispriced that badly. Right? Right now, I'm skipping the Lakers. I believe you could get the Lakers at plus 300 in March or April. There's no need for me to take that bet right now. I'm skipping the Warriors. Warriors aren't even at full strength. Klay Thompson is weeks away from coming back. Right, Jordan Poole, let's see how long it lasts. Maybe it does last, maybe it doesn't. Right, instead, I'm going down further. Understand, the Warriors are plus 900. Folks, the Jazz are loaded. They're plus 1,400. I'm getting Jazz, I'm getting Suns, I'm getting Nuggets right here. Right, I'm skipping over the Clippers simply because I don't know the Leonard situation. I'm not sure if anyone does. Right, I think, too, there should be some doubts on Paul George's alpha. Right, Paul George strikes me as a guy who's better as Robin than Batman. Right, alpha guys, the Currys, the LeBron Jameses, they understand that all eyes are on them 24-7 that they need to have the presence of mind to do a national interview, get unexpectedly doused with water by teammates, then be able to pivot because they are the face of the franchise. Then be able to pivot and talk with the kid in the stands, shake the hand of his celebrity dad, and then, you know, walk off gracefully. Right, folks, that can wear on a guy. If you're prickly like me, Right? If you just want to play basketball and be left alone, like Ben Simmons, the train can come off the tracks. Right, So in the West right here, I've seen enough of the Lakers to understand, in my opinion, they don't have the upside of the Utah Jazz, the Phoenix Suns, and the Denver Nuggets. I believe you want to get all three of those teams right here. Why? Because, believe it or not, the shortest odds on any of those three is 14 to 1. These are among the best teams in basketball. 
in either conference. Finally, let me just say this. You know, talent is one thing, chemistry is another. Right? You know, I have a lot of faith in Daryl Morey, the GM of the Philadelphia 76ers. But people need to understand he has a five alarm fire on his hands. It's October. Ben Simmons has already been suspended. Let's just say I wonder whether Doc Rivers and Ben Simmons are on each other's Christmas card list. Right? You have stars like Joel Embiid issuing statements saying, hey, I'm not here to babysit. I'm guessing. He's not talking about Doc Rivers. <laughs> I'm guessing he's talking about Ben Simmons. Right? We know the team tried to trade Ben Simmons. Folks, that situation could deteriorate quickly. Also, let's revisit the Brooklyn Nets. I've said here online that I feel that the best player in the NBA is James Harden. Right now, Harden's a guy who doesn't look like Adonis. According to reports, Harden is a guy who's been known to hit a strip club or two. Right, there's that group in the NBA too that's wondering how a young, new coach could take the reins in Houston and then get as little support as he got from James Harden at the beginning of last year. Right, there's a reason why people are hesitant to vote for James Harden for MVP. Right? But folks, understand, if he and KD take the court at the same time, it's Harden, the guy who's already won an assist title, the guy who last year with a new team of stars averaged more than 10 assists a game. <laughs> right? Think about that. This is a guy with multiple scoring titles. Right? It's James Harden who's running the offense. He's the most valuable Brooklyn net. Now Kyrie was 40, 50, 90 last year, right? 40% from three, 50 from the floor, 90 from the free throw line. Don't kid yourself. I know there are people out there saying, oh, Kyrie believes the earth is flat. Who cares? Kyrie doesn't even have to believe that the earth is a planet. This is an elite player. Now think about you and your crew. Think about you and your boys. If they didn't have your back, when for health reasons, you made a conscious decision not to get vaccinated, right? At a time when many people nationally are making that decision, right? If your boy shrugged and said, hey, the show must go on, would there be any hard feelings? Will there be a time as this year unfolds where the resentment builds. Where Kyrie starts to think to himself, man, I was in that before KD. I recruited KD for this team. Man, they came to me and asked me if I wouldn't mind playing with James Harden. I approved that deal, and when Harden came here, hey, I said, hey, I don't need to be the point guard. Harden could be the point guard. I'll be the two guard. I've made sacrifices for this team. Are you sure that Brooklyn Nets situation is not going to unravel a bit. How does a team lose a star? Right? Because Kyrie can't participate in team activities and still be going off at short odds of plus 225 to win the NBA title. Isn't that out of whack? I do expect the Nets to have a successful year. The question is how successful? If they're without Kyrie Irving, if it's just this team, knowing that KD did not play a lot of regular season games last year, knowing that KD and Harden are over 30, right? That seems to be a popular theme in the NBA, right? But understand, the older you are, the more likely you are to get hurt, right? Knowing that you have some teams in the East, the Miami Heat, for example, who are young and hungry, at least younger than the Brooklyn Nets. Right, folks, the odds are way off here, right? 
plus 225 with the Brooklyn Nets. You mean to tell me I can throw money on the Miami Heat and get 20 to 1 odds? So right now, what I want gamblers to think about is to pull up the NBA futures. Right, Some of the teams, the top two teams on NBA futures to win the whole thing outright. The Brooklyn Nets and the Lakers have holes. You know that. What other team could lose a Kyrie Irving and still go off at a plus 225? Irving's a major talent. At a minimum, he's significant minutes. Who's going to cover those minutes? Right? So to me, there are huge opportunities. In the East, Miami, 20-1. Even with the dysfunction in Philly, folks, they're offering you 18 to 1. The teams I'm fading, look, I hear new coach, I'm fading the team already. Right? The Boston Celtics, let me quote the who. Who are you? I don't know. Even at 33 to 1, I'm hesitant. The New York Knicks made the playoffs last year, but you know Thibodeau is really more of a regular season head coach than he is a postseason head coach. How did the Knicks look to you in the postseason last year? Right, the Dallas Mavericks. I know you're getting 28 to 1. Right now I'm fading them. Right, when is Luka Doncic going to start playing defense? Right, understand we can forgive Carmelo a little bit, right? Because Carmelo is older. You can look at a guy in his mid-30s and say, okay, well, you know, even Jordan wasn't playing a lot of defense at the end. What's Luca's excuse? Didn't this guy just get a greater than $200 million salary? Also, let's face it, too. Of late, the Dallas Mavericks have just been snake-bitten, haven't they? I just feel that they're a young, evolving team in the deep end of the pool in the NBA. Folks, the Western Conference is no joke. The water is so deep, I'm getting 14-1 on the Utah Jazz, a team that was just the one seed last year. So right now, I'm fading them. Look, I like the Atlanta Hawks. The Hawks beat Philly, right? You understand that Trey Young can only do so much. You understand that Clint Capella, whatever his field goal percentage, is limited offensively. You push him outside of the paint, and he starts to fade a little bit, doesn't he? Right? Understand, you're going to have to pick and choose. I personally, at, at this stage, and there'll be other opportunities as the year evolves. But I'm fading the Hawks. I'm fading the Celtics. I'm fading the Knicks. I'm fading the Mavericks. Even with all that fading, there are some major... I'm fading the Lakers. There's some major deals right now. At this juncture, I'm in with the Utah Jazz. I'm in with the Phoenix Suns. I'm in with the Denver Nuggets. I'm on the sidelines watching the Los Angeles Clippers. We'll see exactly what the Leonard situation is. It's not like Leonard talks to the press enough to tell them what's going on with him. Right? Brooklyn Nets, Lakers, to me the odds are too short right here. I don't see the value I'm getting if all I'm getting is a plus 225 on the Nets and a plus 300 on the Lakers. Anyway, that's how I see basketball right now. You know, I believe futures are the way to fleece the casino. If you get long enough odds, you can hedge, and your season becomes hedging opportunities. So, when you get to the playoffs, if you get to a Western Conference Finals, and it's Utah against Phoenix, or Utah against Denver, you can exhale and say to yourself, well, I have both of these teams. Let me up my stake on both so that I'm really in the catbird seat when one of these teams
comes out of the conference and is in the NBA Finals. To me, that's how you make the big money. It's a season-long hedge fest. But it starts here. And if the casino is silly enough to give you 14-1 to 1 on Utah, 16-1 to 1 on Phoenix, 20-1 to 1 on Denver, I believe your response should be, I'll be your huckleberry. Thank you very much. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.